So this video is the first in a series of tutorial videos where I will walk you through an entire project, uh, how to build an app for Android using the Xamarin Studio tools. And this tutorial uh, is going to be how to make a card game, specifically the game of war. And so if you're not familiar with the game of war, you can uh, come out to this website and check it out. It has a pretty easy rule set. So we work with just a standard set of 52 cards. The deck is divided evenly. Each player receives 26 cards dealt one at a time, face down. And then you go through and take turns. And you can basically work through the logic of the game here. But the goal is to be the first player to win all 52 cards. And so uh, you can set up your game of war for kind of a, a two-player game. The game we're going to build in this tutorial is going to be kind of a one-player game where you play against a computer opponent. And so also to help get us started with this, I've gotten together a set of uh, just regular PNG graphics uh, for our deck of cards. And so you can see all of those cards here and they're just inside of a, a folder on my desktop and then I'll show you how to import those into our project. So I went ahead in Visual Studio and started a new Xamarin Android project and named it War Game. And you can see that I've got the default layout here, complete with this little button that it throws in here that just says, click me, you know, hello world. And so I just like to go in there and delete it. And then you can also come in here and into the main activity and, and take this default uh, code out of there. Now before we really jump into UI creation and, and doing our, our programming, I like to wireframe up a little bit. And so I use fluidui.com, you can use whatever you like, um, but I can come in here and, and create kind of some, some designs of how I think my app should look. And so to start with, uh, our app is just going to have a start new game button, and then I want to create a list that shows past games. Uh, maybe scores and timestamps, something like that. Our next screen over here, uh, we'll have a deal button. We'll have two places for cards. So one will be our computer player and one will be our other player. And as they hit the deal button, these cards will change. And then down here in the hand confirmation, it will say, you know, computer one or player one. And it will keep track of the score over here. So basically how many cards uh, the player has accumulated and then if it is war right per our logic rules for the game of war uh, then we will deal out more cards over here and keep track of the war hand count and then when that's over we'll be able to transition back to the main playing screen so that's the idea that I'm working with here um, to get started with our war game so I'm gonna start by creating the UI elements that I'm going to need for that basic uh, entry screen that will get us started in our game. So I'm going to need a button and that's going to be our, our start new game button and so I'll go ahead and give it a name I guess an ID and I threw some text in here previous games and then we'll just use let's use a list view control and this will be the previous games list and so with our previous games list, uh, the important information is probably when was the last game and how long did it take for the player to gain all 52 cards. Because you pretty much play war like a race, um, since the goal is to be the first person to win 52 cards and we're not playing a two-player game, we can just uh, kind of keep track of how long it took to play each game. So next I'm going to create the second activity, which is going to basically power that second screen where the gameplay is actually taking place. So I'll come over to my Solution Explorer, go ahead and pin that down, and I'm going to uh, right click on my project, and I'm going to choose Add and New Item. And so in this New Item dialog, it's an activity, so I'm going to choose that. I'm going to give it a name. So this is going to be the, uh, I'm going to call this gameplay activity. We'll go ahead and add that. And I am going to want to create the 
uh, GUI layout, that AXML file for this particular activity. So in order to create the layout, we'll come over to the Solution Explorer and right click the layout. And we'll add a new item. And we can see Android layout in the list. And I'm going to name this Gameplay. Kind of a matching naming scheme, right? So we are given main AXML, which is our main GUI layout, hooks to main activity. And then Gameplay AXML will hook to Gameplay Activity. Now we'll have to wire these two together so that you know the compiler basically knows that Gameplay Activity is running that Gameplay layout. So we do this uh, down here in the Gameplay Activity. In the On Create, we use Set Content View and then Resource layout and this is our gameplay and so that's how the compiler knows this particular layout file belongs to this particular code behind or this activity so I'm going to switch this to a table layout since this will be the easiest way to lay these items the buttons and the images and things we're going to want to put over on this side of the design. Okay, so we're going to need a button. I'll lay that button down on there first. This is going to be the deal hand button. So as the user clicks this, they will get a new set of cards. And then we'll need our two images, and from our layout, we kind of wanted them side by side. And so this is where the table layout really comes in handy. And so I'm going to grab an image view and put that down on here. And we'll need to come over to the source to really set up this table. So inside of here we're going to have a table row. And so the first row will be the button. And that'll be great. And then we'll have another table row for our images. So you can see there's the first row, there's the second row. I can just drag that image down inside of there. And if you're having trouble getting that second image in there, you can just come in here and copy and paste. Make sure you have two image views in the second row. And I'm going to name these card one and card two. Sometimes it's just easier to work in the source view. And so we need to adjust our layout so that this looks right. And I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to set up a minimum width so that they, we can tell that how big these images are going to be. We don't want them to look all weird. And I could also set a minimum height. That's probably too big. Once we get the images in here, we'll be able to see if they look skewed or not, but that'll give us a good idea of how big the cards need to be. You can also change the padding values on these cards to kind of try to adjust this layout, make them look a little nicer. Like I said, once we get the images in there, you'll be able to tell if this looks right or not. You can also make some changes to the row, so if you come in here and select the table row, like we can change the gravity to center horizontal and that'll help get us a little more centered in there as well, so that that layout looks nice. So once you have your button and your two images sorted out, we also wanted to add in a place for kind of some confirmation text. So if when they click deal hand, the two images of the cards will show up. And then we want to say computer one or player one, whoever is winning the hand. And so I'm just going to get a text here, and we can start another, uh, we'll need to start another row, um, so that we can put our text in there. There we go, another table row. And then we'll be able to put our, our text in there. If you don't want this text view in there, or if you're having trouble getting your columns to merge, you can just pull that text view outside of the table row. 
and then it will span all the way across and then you could do things with it like center it or um, so we could come in here and say uh, gravity center horizontal right and we're going to call this round feedback and we don't want any text in there to start with so it's going to kind of disappear on us and then we want something to keep track of the current score as well so I'm just going to add in a bigger text and then we'll put current score and then we'll be able to update that as we want so I know that layout can be one of the trickiest parts of developing any app so take your time uh, look at all the different properties in there and, and feel free to you know if you want your layout to look a little different from mine um, you can go ahead with that now at this point we could go ahead and create the third layout which is our war interface uh, but I prefer to kind of jump right into creating um, some gameplay logic so I can kind of be sure of my of my intentions here is this going to work out the way that I think it's going to work out and so this pretty much marks the end of our first video of, of getting started with you know, what kind of app are we making it's always good to walk through some of the planning steps think about uh, what it is that you're doing and then I like to get my UI um, at least in a, in a semi-functional place so that I can start getting into some of the game logic and so the last thing I want to do before we wrap up this video is go ahead and get our drawable resources imported for all of our cards so I'm going to come over to the Solution Explorer and under Resources Drawable I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call it Cards and then I'm going to right click on Cards and I'm going to add an existing item and I'm going to come over to where I have those playing cards on my desktop and I'm going to select them and I'm going to add and so this is going to import them all in and now you can see them all over here in our Solution Explorer. So in our next video we will get started in making some game logic and seeing how we will um, set up our initial card class which will handle things like shuffling and, and some of that additional logic.